Hey, yo, foreigner, you crazy for this okay, one. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that thing I'm jab riding when I'm left hooking. Fiends said they love me cause they know I keep that sack moving. Sad to say, but this is the life that I have grown in. I had to hustle, skipping class, man, I was true in. I can flip some packs and teach you how to do it. This the real deal. Better watch your back cause people will kill. Kill Bill, kill switch on the Glock. Yeah, this the real, real. And people spin around them blocks just like a Ferris wheel. But that's enough of that. Let me tell you about my life and where I grew up at. I grew up in the south of Topeka. Then I moved to the east in the streets and I ain't fucking with neither. I ain't the type to go with kill or go and sit on that block. I'm the type to get some trees. Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Taj, your boy Coop from the Bucket Discussions podcast. But this is not an official podcast. We're just hopping on here real quick because it's the dog days of the offseason. In the NBA, there's really not much going on. NFL is kind of starting back up. It's just really training camp stuff. And although we are excited about the NFL season, nobody wants to hear about training camp, if we really being honest. Austin Rivers, bro, you spit facts, though. I ain't going to lie. Because, I mean, if you take a look at the league right now, you look at the, the Phoenix Sun, bro, look at the look at it for that core four right now. You got DeAndre, what's he making, like $150 million. You got KD making more than $150 million. You got Bradley Bill making 200 Like, come on, man. And then you got Devin Booker making that much money. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. And then you got the rest of the, the role players. You got guys like Terrence Ross, guys like Bismack Biombo, you know what I'm saying, who actually might be free agents right now. But you know what I'm saying? It's guys like that. You know what I'm saying? Like Bowl Bowl. Like, come on now. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's really right for the league because, yeah, you know I mean, bro, you got someone like Jimmy Butler down in Miami who's struggling his ass off every fucking year deep in the playoffs because all he needs is just one more star player. But you got the fucking Phoenix Suns at home. In, in round two because they gave up their whole team for one player. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like it'd just be better for the league overall, bro, for the for the competitiveness, for the fans like you and I, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like I just feel like it'd be, you know, better overall for the league if they somehow found out a way to, you know, just kind of limit this shit, you know what I'm saying? Because there's no way it's going to stop, you know what I'm saying? Because like we was talking about earlier, bro, these motherfuckers, bro, they going to find a way to get to the team they want to go to. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, like, you was talking about with Damian Lillard. Um, like, he wants to go to the Miami Heat, but the league was trying to, like, put, like, give him a memo that was, like, saying, yo, you can't you can't be doing that. You know what I'm saying? You can't go to a specific team. If you get traded to a team, you, you're going to play for that team specifically. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, in my personal opinion, I think it's, it's pretty fair. But, I mean – Honestly, I ain't going to lie, though. I feel like now is kind of like the fucked up time to do it. Now that you got someone like Dane who's actually trying to, you know what I'm saying, compete for a championship. But you guys like – you got guys like James Harden. You got a guy like Ben Simmons who who don't even really have that competitive, you know what I'm saying, nature. But, like, they're still finding ways to, like, kind of just move team to team somehow. It's just like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And now they got the league adding and implementing shit that kind of, like, fucks up for shit like – guys like Damian Lillard and stuff like that. So it's just – I mean, it is what it is, but I don't know. For Austin Rivers, bro, that's just for his comments, bro, I feel like he was spot on. I mean, I feel like it's kind of hard to even debate that. You know what I'm saying? Man, oh, shit. my reaction to this whole situation is do not kill the messenger. I know it's easy for you to be like, damn, Austin Rivers, he a bum-ass player, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> on Damian Lillard and James Harden, like, I understand that, that point completely, bro, but, like, I'm a fan of Austin Rivers, but even if I wasn't a fan, bro, I'd sit back and be like, hold on, let me. Bro, hear. he ain't even a bum, bro. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying? saying? He's a good player, bro. But folks, that's what I'm fans. saying. We know because his dad, doctor, <laughs> whatever the case is, bro. Hey, he had one of the best high school mixtapes, man. I swear to God. I can hoop for sure. Like, I, don't ever get me wrong, bro. But he's a hoop. Sure. But like, I've seen a lot of people in the comments on Instagram really going in on Austin Rivers. And I was like, damn, bro, like, like hear the man out, bro. Like, hear what he's saying, like. I know that I know the message might be a little weird to you, but I just listen to what he's saying. I listen to what he said. No, you're right. Me and Cool, we listened to it again before we started, you know, recording, and it was like no logical fan can argue with what he's saying. Like we're talking about NBA players, and like we can even throw in like the the new contracts that are coming out. We got players that are not even like deemed as like championship guys or leaders of teams, and like. Bro, we're just giving, like, not we, but the NBA is just giving out, like, money. We're giving out max contracts. And it's like the guys, like a Russell Westbrook, how much is the man's contract? Eight million? Eight million, yeah, that's ridiculous. Like, 
it's not it's 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 an imbalance in the league, bro. It's not looking good. Um, and then also it's just a lot of people already think athletes are NBA players are are spoiled and privileged, and it's like you guys aren't making it a little. You're not making it easier by requesting a trade. Oh, and if I don't get to where I want to go, I'm not playing. And it's crazy because every other superstar ha- that has done this in like the past five years has gotten traded to the team they want to get traded to, or a team that's uh, just as good. Now it's with Dane. It's like, nope, we can't do that. And it sucks because the NBA is going to have to crack down on this with a player like Dane, who does deserve to go to the Miami Heat. Don't get me wrong. But on the flip side, I understand the Portland Show Blazers too, bro. This is not this is not NBA 2K in my career, bro. This is real life, bro. Like the Portland Show Blazers have no obligation to trade Dame to where he wants to go to. They're only obligated yeah. to their franchise and getting the best package possible. Bringing some time back to play with Scoot Henderson, Shane Sharp, and all those guys over there, man. So I just feel like it's really – this is going to be like a turning point in the NBA, I feel like. It's going to be coming to a turning point. We even got a guy like James Harden who's still trying to get traded like the 40 year time, bro. Like, bro, make your mind up, bro. You in Philly, bro. You playing with Joel and B. Bro, you have to hoop. If you want to win a chip, you got to hoop, bro. You're not going to get carried. Like, they, are, yeah, they have a good situation over there in Philly, bro, but it's just like – I don't know if James Harden wants to hoop. I think he just wants to get carried to a chip. I don't know, bro. It looks like. But he's trying, to, hey, he's trying to go to the Clippers with, with Coop's guys, man. So Coop's very excited about that. They're going to have yeah, James Harden on uh, Paul George. Yeah. No, nah, keep going that. This is – hell no, bro. Hey, I wouldn't mind because I love James Harden, but, like, bro, is he actually going to, like, contribute, you know what I'm saying? Or is he is he just going to sit on the sideline with the two other stars, you know what I'm saying? So it's don't like get that. me wrong, bro. We know James Harden's a good player. No, like, he he great. was a great player. He still yeah. has flashes of that at times. But, bro, like, he's one of the funnest players in NBA history to ever, you know, just to sit there and watch, bro. Like, this man was putting up 55 and, like, 11s, bro. Like, going crazy. But he's not the same James Harden, James Harden anymore, bro. And we all know that. So, it's like, it's not about the money anymore. And I'm not counting anybody's pockets, but come on now. We know James Harden doesn't need no more goddamn money from the league. It's not about the money. It's not about, you know, where the location, because he's played in a lot of beautiful places. It's not about, is it about winning? That's the real question. Like, when is it going to be about winning? Like, we're, are we going to win a chip? Are we just going to be like, oh, I want to play with my buddies? What What is it, man? Are we going to are we gonna eventually, like, try to win? That's all I care about, bro. Like, and James Harden might not care about that, bro. I don't know what the case is, bro. But it's just tough because he's putting other players in a bad spot, you feel me? I feel like, oh, yeah, like he's burning bridges everywhere he goes, bro. And it's like, eventually, bro, we got to look at you because, bro, everybody can't just be trying to do you wrong. But, like, Daryl Morey, that was your guy, bro. He wrote for you to the very end, bro. So, I, I don't know what's going on with James Harden, man, but it's just not looking too good. Um, Yeah, bro, it's tough. It's tough. But, I mean, we'll see what happens with Dane. Yeah. Miami Heat. If we're being honest, though, that Miami Heat don't really have that much, you know, to really trade for Dame. Like, a Tyler Hero, good player, but, like, is he worth trading for Dame? You're going to have to throw in some picks. You're going to have to throw in some undrafted players, bro. Like, Yeah, honestly, bro, I'd, I'd trade him, like, a team like Brooklyn before i trade him to the Heat if I was the Portland Trailblazers. Because, like you said, bro, this is real life. Like, this is – there's two sides to this. Like, obviously, we talk about loyalty with the players and shit. Like, that's what Damian Lillard's about, but – when you're the Portland Trailblazers, bro, you want to get, like you said, the best package for, like, your greatest player of all time. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I mean, yeah, Tyler Hero and a couple first-round picks and, like, some young, decent other young players. Like, I feel like that isn't enough for a guy like Damian Lillard who's on the top 75 players of all time list. So it's kind of just, you know what I'm saying? So Honestly, bro, like, if they wanted to, like, if they had that great of a relationship with Damian, it was like, bro, we're going to trade you to the heat no matter what it takes. And I have nothing wrong with that. Like, a player like Dame does deserve that. But yeah, people sure. see here act like the Trailblazers better trade him. I'm like, bro, that's not how it works. Like, why would you trade your most prized possession for peanuts? Yeah, Tyler Hero's yeah. not going to do nothing to change life for you in Portland. Like, if y'all really trying to strip it down to the studs and build a contender, y'all should probably get a good package, bro, for Dame because you're probably never going to get a player like that ever again in your guys' franchise history. If we really be on. Yeah. I mean, there's a chance. I mean, they had a chance with KD, but fuck that up. And they took Greg Oden, bum ass. It's a damn.
Shout out Greg Owen, though. No disrespect. But um, no, I'm sure. Yeah, man, let's go ahead and, and transition, bro. Comment down below. Let us know how you guys feel about Austin Rivers' comments. Do you think Austin Rivers is trash? Whatever, bro, you feel. Comment down below. But next yeah, up, we've got a few topics that we're going to touch on. First, we got Ricky Rubio, man. I thought this was a very uh, interesting topic. Ricky Rubio's taking – is he taking a year off? Or is he just taking, like, a, a mental break? I have no clue, He's just going to come back. All right, well, no how do you feel about uh, – how do you feel like feel about mental health and sports, bro? Let's go ahead and speak. I mean, what do you feel about uh Ricky Rubio? How would you feel if you were one of his teammates? I mean, if I was one of his teammates, honestly, I wouldn't really give a shit. Cause I mean, obviously I would, but like when it comes to playing, like he didn't really do much last season. But like as for like a man to man type thing, like, yeah, you know, it, it sucks. I hope he's going, you know, I hope he's doing like doing better. I hope he ain't going through like a hell of a tough time. I ain't like no family members or nothing, but like, you know what I'm saying? But as you know, for mental health overall in the league, bro, I mean, I feel like it kind of goes hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got guys like Kevin Love, even Paul George and shit like that. DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, DeMar DeRozan especially, who, you know, just spoken out on it. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like, for the most part, I mean, I feel like it, it's it's needed. You know what I'm saying? By NBA players. Because there's a lot of athletes that go through shit, too. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I think it's good to see, like, you know, a lot of role models to these kids to see, like, you know, these guys going kind of through the same emotions, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I feel like overall for the league, I feel like it's good to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to just, like, grown men in general. So. Yes, sir, man. Um, the NBA is really a, one of the biggest platforms in the world, bro. So I feel like any time that, like, mental health gets highlighted to where it's, like, okay to talk about, I feel like that's always a great thing. Um, as far as if I was Ricky Rubio's teammate, bro, I'd just be, like, in support like, bro, I don't know what's going on in my personal life, but whatever you need to do to get your mind back right, bro, and just not even just for basketball, just for in general, bro, so you can be there for your family, be, be there to be able to just support them and take care of them and just be there, bro. I'm yeah. going to respect it. I'm not like, – because I'm a person, bro, I don't get in people's personal business. Like, if you say, like, something wrong with you and you need to get it right, bro, I'm going to respect that. Hey, if you need me, I'm here, bro, just call me. But, like, I wouldn't feel no type of way, and I'm glad to see a lot of NBA players around the league have been tweeting and supporting them and – and like really encouraging him and, and shouting him out for doing what he's doing. So shout out to uh, Ricky Rubio. Um, as far as the NBA though, like I said, it's always a good thing, bro. Not even just NBA, but NFL and all that stuff. I feel like it really shows that like, no, these people is human too, bro. No matter how much we think, like, are we playing fantasy football? Are you ruined my team by getting injured? All that different stuff, bro. It just shows like these are real humans. And for me personally, bro, growing up. I always felt like, damn, that's stuff that you don't talk about. You feel me to nobody? Because I feel like people will look at you like, oh, you weak because you're dealing with whatever mentally. But, like, now, growing up, I was already in high school and, like, the Dak Prescotts and the DeMar Rosens and all those guys came out and really started talking about it. But, like, I feel like they made it okay. And it's not even just them, but, like, just in the world in general. They made it feel okay to talk about, you feel me? And it even got to be nothing, like, super detrimental to your health or just whatever. Just going through men stuff mentally. That made it easier. So I want to shout them out for that, bro. And like you said, just being a man, they made it comfortable for you to even talk to your friend, talk to your brother, talk to your dad, whatever the case may be, bro. Like, they made it comfortable. So shout out to them for that. And I hope whatever Ricky Rubio is going through gets better. I hope he gets better. I hope his family's good. And I hope everything just, just plays out how it's supposed to. For sure, man. Shout out to Ricky Rubio. All right, now let's go ahead and touch on to – these contracts, bro. The NBA's been handing out a lot of money, bro, these past few days. A lot of big bags. <laughs> a lot of biggie bags, no windy, man. But we're talking about Jalen Brown signed the richest contract in NBA history, and a lot of people are upset about that, bro. Like, Jalen Brown, how is he the, the highest paid player in NBA history? Like, he's not even that good. He's not a championship player. The Celtics aren't going yada, 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 yada. You can't dribble with his left hand. <laughs> Exactly. I seen the left hand jokes, bro, which is funny, but it's Jalen Brown. He's a hooper. And then we got Anthony Davis. Anthony day to day Davis. Three years, 186. I hope I got that right. I was yeah. doing that memory. The high, I think that's the highest three million dollar deal ever. So I didn't even do the math on how much that is a year, man, but that's a bad that's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Like, shout out to those guys. Cooper, how you feeling about these contract extensions? Hey, man, it's, I mean, it's well-deserved, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
like we was talking about a while ago, bro. These contracts, man, over the next couple of years, it's just going to continue to 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 keep, you know, getting bigger and bigger. So I don't know why people are continually to be surprised by these contracts because it's just like, I mean, at this point, what do you expect when you got guys like, like fucking Duncan Robinson getting paid eighty million dollars, and you know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of like, I mean, what you expect at this point. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like for the most part, it's well-deserved because Anthony Davis, when he is on the court and he is available, he's definitely worth the $186 million players in three years, to be honest. At this point in 2023, I mean, that's just me personally. I mean, with Jalen Brown, I mean, you can make an argument like, yeah, there's other players that could, I guess, have that much money. But at, like at this point, like I said, it's 2023. What's the – there's really – there shouldn't be no gripe. You know what I'm saying? Like I see people saying, well – if he's making that much, that means Shea should be making like four hundred million. It's like, I mean, sure, I guess, but like at the end of the day, y'all are still gonna complain about that, like how that's too much for a guy like Shea. So it's like, what are we really talking about? You know what I'm saying? So, no, nah, I just I don't see why fans continue to like just pocket watch. I mean, that's really you what know, it is. Dead ass. It's like, who gives a fuck? Like, if they got, I mean, Jesus Christ, they money. obviously like that's what I'm saying. It. Like, what the hell is they money to spend? So it's like, I mean, shit, they deserved it. It's 2023. Like, bro, go to go get a gallon of gas. Like, go to the store. Everything's going up. Like, motherfuckers act like it's just the contract. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, what the hell? <laughs> hey, all I want to say is, first off, shout out Anthony Davis, man. Let's get a chip this year, man. Let's get a chip. Let's all make right, now, three chill years out. count. Chill let's out. Make three years count in L.A., man. I don't know how long you're going to be there if I'm being real with you, but let's make these <laughs> – you make these years count, man. Shit. Like, let's be honest, bro. Me and you, we're real sports fans, bro. I feel like a lot of people are complaining are casual fans because they don't understand how it works. Bro, it's like you just made the, the analogy, go to the store, go to the to the gas station, everything's going up. Bro, the NBA is like a it's like a, a, a grocery store, bro, or a retail store, whatever the case may be. When you go there, certain items are gonna cost certain prices. Jalen Brown and Anthony Davis are max guys, so you're gonna have to pay them max money. And they're both playing for two max franchises, like crazy. It don't matter. That's what I'm saying. It don't matter if you feel like he's not they have money. You don't feel like he can win a championship or he's a championship guy or he's the best player. It don't matter, bro. That's the level of player he is, so he's gonna get paid that level of money. You feel me? Now, if yeah, it's like a guy that's like a, a, a vet men guy, he's gonna get paid a certain amount of money, right? Yeah, that's just how it works, bro. It's like the NBA is gonna be paying money. Regardless, somebody's going to get it, bro. So it's like, okay, cool. We're going to pay this guy. It's not like they sit there negotiating, like, oh, yeah, we can only give him this much. No, bro, he's going to get paid. There's a, a certain uh, salary that he's going to get paid. You feel me? Five yeah, hundred sure. four million. It sounds crazy right now, but I promise you, right now. you go, you're going to look back at that contract at this time next year and be like, damn, that ain't shit, bro. Like, buddy, I just got 500 million. Like, that's just how it works, bro. The <laughs> next man up. It's always going to get paid more money. He's going to get paid the most money. It don't mean he's the best player. It's like yeah. the quarterbacks in the NFL. The next guy up is always going to get paid more. Now, it depends on that player. If a player is like, oh, I want to be the, the highest paid, which I hate players like that, because it's like, bro, when you when your contract comes back up, you're going to get paid. But, like, it's always going to be the next guy up is going to get paid the most money. So there's no need to be, you know, about it, bro. Like, it's really not that big a deal. Jalen, right. hey, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, you know what this reminds me of? That Mike Conley situation, like, eight years ago. I remember he was, like, the highest-paid player in the league for, like, an offseason. Everybody was tripping, huh? Everybody was tripping. Yeah, and then, and then a couple years later, it didn't even matter because his contract was buried by, like, motherfuckers like Blake Griffin who was getting 150 mil, 180 mil. You know what I'm saying? So I it's it's like, all it, all it exactly. really shows is that the NBA is a money machine. That's all it's really exactly. showing. Yeah. They just produce money. If they're generating this much money, if – Somebody can get paid five years, three hundred and four million, which he's gonna get all of that money. Like that's crazy to think about, but he's gonna be receiving all three hundred and four mil. Because contracts maybe are guaranteed, unless there's a, a team option on there, a player option, whatever the case may be. But he's gonna get paid regardless. He don't even have to be on the Celtics to get paid. So like, it's not that big a deal. He's gonna get paid wherever he goes in the NBA. So it's not that big a deal. Shout out to Jalen Brown, bro. That's definitely a celebration, bro. I hope you popped a few bottles, bro. I hope you just took a, a few shots, bro. Whatever the case may be, bro. I hope, hope you turned up, bro. Because that's a big achievement, even if it's only for like a few weeks or a few months. Bro, you the highest player, highest paid player in a league full of a Will Chamberlain, a Shaq, a Kobe Bryant, LeBron. Like, bro, that's crazy. Congratulations.
Yeah. AD, like I said, bro, I hope you in the, in the lab, bro, getting right, bro. Making sure you stay healthy this year because we got a chip that we got to bring back to L.A. And I'm not talking about the Clippers. Let's go. Well, you should be. You should yes, be. Because that's where it's coming. Let's Anything see. else to add, bro? Nah, man. I feel like we, you know, we hit the nail right on the head. But, man, I will say it was definitely good to hop it back on here. You know what I'm saying? Chopping it back up. But, um, yeah, man. Yes, sir, man. This is not another edition of the Buck Discussions podcast. We just hopped on here to chop it up real quick, man. But we will see you guys in a few weeks. Yes, sir. Or maybe next week. Who knows? Yeah. We need some some real topics to talk about, man. Then we'll be back on here. Thank you. you. Sir. In the jungle like I'm Conan, kind of with both hands Switch the flow like it was broken I'm on the road, man, making plays just like DeRozan I shoot my shot, and that shit wetter than the ocean I brag a lot, but with the wind and come the bow I made 